So now that we talked about the QRS complex, specifically bundle branch blocks and AV blocks, the next thing you want to look at is the QT interval. We've probably heard it a lot in the hospital, QT interval, QTC, um, and it's important to know why, why we talk about it. The main reason is if you, someone has prolonged QT, it can lead to death, and we do not want that. So we want to make sure that we correct whatever is causing it, we stop any medications or any other things that could be leading to a prolonged QT, so we don't lead to that outcome. So there's a lot of different things that can prolong QT. One of the main ones is medications, and there's a lot of different medications to be on the lookout for. Specifically, you should know the kind of big uh, groups of medications that could cause them. So antipsychotics, antiarrhythmics, antibiotics, and specific uh, HIV medications such as protease inhibitors. The ones to kind of keep on a lookout for because they're used a lot are one, antibiotics, so things like azithromycin, which is often used for things such as community-acquired pneumonia, and fluoroquinolones, along with antiarrhythmics, such as amiodarone, and then antipsychotics, such as Haldol and SSRIs. These medications are very often used and can be a cause of prolonged QT, uh, QT interval. Other things to look out for are electrolyte abnormalities. So basically anything that causes low electrolytes. So hypo, um, hypokalemia, hypomagnesemia, hypocalcemia, hypothyroidism, and even hypothermia. All those things can prolong QT. So if you see a patient that all of a sudden starts having prolonging QT on their EKGs or on their telemetry, it's good to check for electrolytes. It's good to check for thyroid function to make sure that there's no quick reversible causes that you could treat for. There's also uh, congenital abnormalities, such as Romano Ward and Jabelle Lang Nielsen. Um, however, those are much less more common, but sometimes can present on tests. So when we talk about QT interval, a normal QT interval is different for men and women. Depending on where you look, for the most part, a QT greater, greater than 460 is prolonged in women, greater than 440 is prolonged in men. But a quick way to know if someone has QT prolongation is to check if it's more than half of the R to R interval. And we'll look at that in a sec. But basically, it's a quick way to just kind of look at the EKG, see if the T wave ends more than half of the RR interval. If it does, then you know this patient likely has QT prolongation. Whenever we talk about QT intervals, we also talk about QTC. And what QTC means is that, that that's a corrected QT interval. And what's correcting for is the heart rate. There's a ton of different formulas, as you see here, for QTC. And you don't have to know any of them. Because usually, for the most part, the QTC that you get on an EKG that you print out on the EKG machine is relatively accurate. And if you use this to compare future EKGs, you have the same reference point. So you can know if a patient's uh, QTC is prolonging or um, shortening based on whatever intervention, interventions you're making. So let's look at this EKG. So first, let's use this RR interval trick. So if we just look at the uh, lead two at the bottom here, and we look at the, uh, these two R waves, if we kind of split them in half right here, we see that this T wave actually ends much further after the halfway mark. It almost doesn't even peak at the halfway mark. And if we count it, we would have, let's see, one big box, two big box, three big boxes, and a half more of a box. So three big boxes would be three times 200, which is 600 milliseconds, and then another 100, so 700 milliseconds. So the QT interval is 700 milliseconds, which is much longer than the 450s that we mentioned on the slide before. So this patient would have significant QT prolongation that you would have to fix rather rapidly to prevent them from going into uh, deadly rhythms such as VTAC or VFib. So those are QT intervals. Next, we move on to our last section, which is ischemia.